In this video, I'm going to be discussing AutoCAD Architecture's railing tools. I already have a video for stairs, so you're welcome to review that for the creation of the stair itself. Railings can also be used for horizontal guardrails, so not necessarily only for stairs. The railing tool, however, is under the stair tool if you look for it on the ribbon, or you can also find it on the tool palette on the design tab. After you start the railing tool, it's going to work in one of two ways, so you really need to read your, your command line to see which way it's working. For example, mine says select a stair at the command line. There are other times when you may start the railing command and it may say start point, in which case it's expecting you to draw a horizontal railing. It really depends on how the command was last used. So in my case, because I do want to attach it to a stair, I can proceed. If it's not asking you to select a stair, but that's the way you wish to use the command, then you need to use the attach option at the command line. So in this case, I could do A for attach, and then I could do either N for none if I wanted to draw a horizontal railing, or S for stair if I wanted to draw one that's attached to a stair. So the important part about attaching it to a stair is that it's going to automatically um, anchor itself and be angled or sloped properly for the stair that it's being attached to. So that's why it's important to use that option if you're placing it on a stair. Um, so I'm going to do S for stair to go back to that option. And then I can select the stair. Now the other important thing here is to select the stair where you want the railing to go. In other words, the inside, the center, or the outside. Select it at that point because that's where the stair is going to go. So I already have walls on the, ins on the outside so I'm going to select the inside in order to place the railing there on the inside of my stair. Now it does extend it all the way up, you just can't see that because it's above my cut plane. So now I'm going to go to an isometric view so that you can see the railing that's been attached. So there is the railing. Now you'll probably most times want to adjust the settings of the railing style. Just like any other AEC object that I've gone through in the videos, this style controls the behavior and setup and graphics of the object. So I'm going to select this railing and then go to Edit Style in my ribbon in order to look at how this is really working. On the Rail Locations tab, you have the option to add a guardrail or a handrail or both. In this case, I want to use a, as I want to use the railing as a guardrail and a handrail because I want to have something to hold on to and I also don't want people falling off the stair and hurting themselves. So I'm going to check the guardrail box to add that to the railing. Normal guardrail is 3 foot 6 in height and a normal handrail is between 210 and 30. So I'm in the right range there for the heights. You, as you can see the little pictures on the left help you to figure out which railings which. So for example a bottom rail could be added and then that would raise the balusters up so that they did not anchor themselves to the treads. Um, depends kind of on whether you're doing a commercial stair or a residential stair, what the materials are. I'm going to leave that off for now. On the post locations tab, you have a few options here. And again, look at the little picture with the letters to see which is which. The dynamic posts are automatically spaced around four feet. I'm going to turn those off, which means that you're only going to have posts really at the start and end and corners which, if this is a residential stair, is probably more realistic. <clears throat> the fixed posts, um, normally I leave on. You can adjust the size of the extension there if you want. And then the balusters are the frequent vertical members that are keeping people from falling under the rail. Uh, normally you want those spaced around 4 inches because you do not want to allow the passage of a 4-inch sphere between the balusters. So I'm going to leave that at 4. On the Components tab, you have the option to really get in and look at the shapes of these members and how, what size each, is, each of them is in terms of the uh, sectional profile. For example, the handrail right now is inch and a half diameter. The guardrail is inch and a half. Those are both circular. You could change that very easily here by picking the pull down and choosing a different profile. You can also make custom profiles if you wanted and then uh, add them and then they will show up here to be selected if you want a more customized shape. So you can always change these around if that's important to you. Extensions allow you to extend the railing at the top or bottom or both um, in order to comply with ADA if that's what you would like to do. 
uh, depends on whether, again, it's a commercial building or residential. It does not return the extensions naturally down, so that uh, often takes a little bit of fiddling with to get it to do exactly what you want. I want to focus on the basics for today, though. So I'm going to hit OK, and now I have a railing that includes a handrail and a guardrail. So then that's going to work better for what I'm trying to do. I'm going to go back to top view and then uh, do a railing that is horizontal. For example, if you have a second floor that's open to you know, a loft type situation, a two-story space um, that the second floor overlooks, then you would want a, a guardrail obviously there as well. So I can do railing again. In this case, I don't want to select a stair. So I'm going to do A for attach and N for none. And then uh, that will allow me to draw it basically freestanding. So now it does ask for a start point. So I can click any start point and end point. I can also continue. It's a lot like drawing a wall at this point. And I can make any shape that I want there. So that's very easy to do. In the case of a guardrail like this, you don't really need a handrail on it. So a lot of times after this, uh, I will then copy the style using the copy style button in the ribbon in order to make a second version. So now this is standard two style. And then I can uncheck the handrail so that this is a guardrail only to keep uh, kids or whoever from falling off of the second floor. So now when I hit OK, it has simplified that railing to uh, be what it needs to be. Just keep in mind, if you're drawing this freestanding, you'll have to control the height and where it goes. So you can always adjust the grips and the height is going to be dictated by the elevation property in the properties palette. So if my second floor was 12 or 13 or 14 feet above the uh, Z zero height, then your elevation field would allow you to raise that up. And then that controls the bottom of the railing. So if your finished floor height is at 14 feet, let's say, for the second floor, then you would just make your elevation 14 feet and then your railing would be at the proper height. Another option, if you would like to make a railing that uses something different, such as an infill panel or a glass panel, is to use the bottom rail for that element. So in this particular case, I have unchecked the handrail, turned on the bottom rail, and then on the components tab, I have the bottom rail set to two foot six in depth, and then I changed the guardrail to rectangular so that it would go a little bit more with the design of this particular railing. And then I have the bottom rail set to bottom justification so that it would raise it up and measure the start, the depth from the bottom of the railing rather than the center. So those simple changes allow you to have a different type of design like this for your guardrail rather than the normal pickets or balusters that you see here. The problem with using the bottom rail for a glass infill panel is if you try to use that idea on a rail that is attached to a stair, you end up with these weird corners sticking out because it doesn't understand that the end of that glass would have to be tapered in order for it to look correct. The best solution for that, if you really want to do glass infill panels on a stair, is to actually use the stringer of the stairs to provide you with the glass panel. Here's an example of that. If I edit the stair style, you can see that I have three stringers added, two are normal stringers, and then I have a glass stringer that has been applied, uh, set to the housed type of stringer, and then by adjusting these dimensions, especially the uh, D for the total flight dimension, it adds that height to the stringer vertically so that it will infill between the normal stringer and the railing. So the pink railing that you see is a standard railing without any posts or balusters applied. And then the glass part is the stringer that has been applied here in the stair style. I only have one of those because I'm assuming that the wall would still be on the other two sides. Obviously you could add a fourth stringer and then apply that as glass on the other side if you did not want the wall.